All right, we will go ahead and get started. Um, as I noted, this is our webinar about Genesis Cloud queue settings. My name is Tom with Inflow, and I will be taking you through this webinar today. Before we get started, we are going to talk a little bit about Inflow, what we can do for you and your business, and make sure that your voice applications are working the way that they, they should be for your environment. And then we're going to jump right into the queue setup, where we'll be talking about the different facets of the queues, the queues portion within the admin section of Genesis Cloud, and go over the various configurations that you can do within those queues. So a little bit about Inflow here. Who is Inflow? What can we do for you and your business? We're a leading consulting and services company enabling digital transformation through cloud customer engagement technologies. Currently have over 70 employees consisting of sales, advisors, technical contacts, and customer support. And we serve over 1,000 endpoint customers from mid-market to global enterprise across most verticals. We like to operate with integrity, transparency, urgency, and agility. Want to make sure you get all the information you need and then some for your voice application so that we can make sure it's working exactly the way that your business desires. And we offer full end-to-end -end capabilities in UCAS, CCAS, WFM, WFO, analytics, and other customer engagement services. Here's a quick snippet of some of the customers that we do support. and a few of our technology partners as well. As we go through the webinar, there is a Q&A box in your Zoom application. You can use that to ask questions as we go through. At the end of the webinar, I will take a look and answer any questions that I do see um, that are in this Q&A portion. If we have any questions that I cannot directly answer, I will make sure to get your contact information so that we can get you that answer before the end of the business day. And so with that, we're going to go ahead and jump directly into it. I'll go ahead and full screen this to make it easier to see. Um, and as you can see, we are currently in the admin panel of Genesis Cloud. And what we are going to be talking about today is specifically the various settings within the queues that you can create within Genesis Cloud and how to configure those. This is going to um, be focused specifically on the queues set up within the contact center tab. So we aren't going to be going into the architect portion, um, which is the way that you actually get those calls to your queues. Um, but we're going to talk about the different setups within queues and what would be required as well. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find queues, which is under contact center. If you aren't super familiar with the, with the uh, layout in the admin portal as well, you can use the search bar. If I start typing in queues, queues will pop up there as well. And I'm going to go ahead and click into it. When I do, it's going to pop up all the queues that are currently built within the organization that I'm looking at. As you can see, we have quite a few in our sandbox environment. We use this for a lot of internal testing. If you're looking for a specific queue, you can look for them up in the top right here. Otherwise, you can search through the pages. In this case, I will look for mine, which will be this Tom test queue. And we're going to talk about the different things that we can do here. So I'm going to go ahead and click into the Tom test queue. And this is going to bring me to a page with a number of different tabs that we can look at for different configuration options with this queue. Now, the queue is going to be how you actually facilitate the actual call center method of taking calls. So this is where you would set up your agents so that they can, they can pick up calls um, as, as needed as they go through the call flows. And it can apply not only to calls, but depending on your organization, you might use queues for chat, for messaging, and for email as well. So there's a few different things that you can do with queues. And there's a lot of different options that you have available to you. Um, so um, for starters here, up at the top, we've got our name and description. Name is simply going to be the name of the queue. This is going to be how you see it in the queues tab, as well as how you would call the queue um, when you try to assign it into a flow within architect, you would want to know this name. Otherwise, this name is not necessarily anything that you have to make a um, specific thing. You can do whatever you want within your system to make sure that you know what this is. To go hand in hand in that, with that is a description. If you want to give your queue a description, you can do that here. This is just a flavor text box. So if I wanted to, for example, training queue for webinars, if I put that in there, that would simply show up in the queues overview so I could find what I'm looking for just a little bit easier. Um, down below that, we also have our division. If you are familiar with divisions, this is a way that you can logically separate your system out um, so that only, only certain facets of your system are visible to certain people. So for example, if you have multiple 
uh, multiple sites in your system and you have um, employees that are responsible for those sites, but no other sites within your call center, you can use divisions to divide that up to make sure that your users can only see what they're supposed to. Um, from a queue standpoint, that's going to simply dictate who can see the queue availability and who can make changes to the queue. Um, for most of you, this will stay in the home division, which is totally fine. And then we have after call work. And this is actually where the first piece that many, many of our customers use comes into play for a queue. And this is going to be for any type of interaction that the, that the uh, queue takes, whether it's just a voice interaction or if you are doing chat, message, email, or you are doing callbacks from that queue. Um, you have four different options with after call work, which is the time that your agents get after they take a call. Um, to finish up anything that they need to do before they can get back in and start receiving more interactions. So to talk about the, the uh, four different options, optional just allows your agent to choose whether or not they want to go into after call work so that they can finish up what they need to do. If they choose not to, they're placed directly back into the queue and are directly available for additional calls at that time. Um, if they do place themselves in after call work, there is no upper limit at this point. So um, if you are set to optional, they can keep themselves in after call work as long as they need to until they are ready to start taking calls again. Mandatory discretionary is similar. Um, the mandatory portion will force your agents into after call work after each call. However, it is at their discretion when they will be able to actually leave after call work and start taking calls again. However, there is no upper limit again. So it is on the agent to decide how long they are going to remain in after call work before they return to the queue using mandatory and discretionary method. The other two options are essentially the same, but Mandatory time box will put a limit on how long after call work can be. And that will actually apply in this option here for the after call work timeout, which is in seconds. So as an example here, if I have 30 seconds in this box, then with this setup, mandatory time box and an after call work timeout of 30 seconds, your agent is going to automatically be placed into after call work after his call is done. They would be able to leave after call work at any time that they deem appropriate. However, after 30 seconds, they are automatically removed from after call work and are placed back into the queue. So that, that would be an example of time boxed here. And then finally, there is also mandatory time boxed no early exit. And in this case, and you can see here, it does apply to voice conversations here. Um, in this particular case with the same setup, your agent would be placed into after call work for 30 seconds. They cannot leave after call work. And after 30 seconds, they would be placed back into the queue. So this would be essentially a mandatory 30 second break for them to finish up whatever it is that they were doing to allow, allow them to be ready for their next interaction. In addition, there is this box for manual assignment. This allows from the supervisor tab, this allows um, folks who actually place people into the queue as needed. Manual assignment would allow that to occur. With this off, you would have to be a member of the queue to be active in the queue. Um, so that would be for temporary assignment for things like overflow purposes. And that concludes the general tab. The next thing we're going to go to is the routing tab here. The routing tab can go from fairly simple to fairly complex. And so we're going to talk about that here. There are three different methods of routing within Genesis Cloud. You have standard routing, which would simply be um, longest idle for your agents. So if you have a number of agents in the queue, it is not looking for anything like skills-based routing. It isn't looking for anything specific there. It is just looking at your pool of agents who is available and it's going to choose whoever has been available the longest to send that call to. Your other options, however, are bullseye routing and preferred agent routing. We're gonna start with bullseye routing. Um, because this is a very common methodology for routing within the system. What bullseye routing does is it allows you to add different, uh, different bullseye markers um, or points in the system where you can specify which agents should get calls first. Um, and you can do things like remove skills to, uh, to increase your pool of agents um, and add multiple rings to this to, to kind of create an escalation and overflow for your queue. So as an example here, if I add just a couple of rings here, um, it's going to start at point one, which you can see is listed as one, and then it will move to two and then three 
And then finally, it would end at four. And all these are configurable. So for example, let's say I want my initial agents to be um, to get the call for 30 seconds before it moves to point two. Maybe I want this to then ring for 90 seconds. And keep in mind here, anything, anything um, that was in marker one also applies to two here. So once we move to two, any agents with, with bullseye two will be rang, as well as any agents that become available under bullseye one. Um, and then finally, once it gets to three, anything in three would be added to that as well. So in this particular case, call would come in. It would ring any agents marked as bullseye one for 30 seconds. Then it would ring anybody anybody with bullseye two or bullseye one for 90 seconds, and then anybody with three, two, or one for 90 seconds. And then after that, once it hits four, all agents in the queue become available here. So this can be used as an overflow where you have some um, some agents that potentially can handle the calls that could come into the queue um, or interactions for that matter, because it can be any other type of interaction for this as well, um, but um, should not be the front line this would be a way to do that. In addition, if you do use skill-based routing um, in your system, you can remove skills with each of these bullseye ring exits to improve the ability to take these calls. So for example, maybe you have a support queue that uses a support skilling. Um, support skill, the support skill would be required to answer any of those calls coming through the queue. Um, but maybe after on bullseye ring three, you would then remove that skill which it looks like we don't have one directly searchable. But um, the um, if you remove the skill, that's no longer attached to the call in queue. And then anybody that doesn't have the skill could then pick up the call. So this allows you to use um, overflow agents that aren't necessarily skilled for the, for the calls that they would be taking as overflow, just to make sure that they can actually pick those calls up. Um, now, um, this goes hand in hand with your evaluation method. Um, which the default in the system is going to be all skills matching. If there is a skill associated with the call, which happens via architect, then it looks for anybody in the queue that has that skill to match. Um, your other options are best available skills. This is actually based on the skills slider um, that you can assign to agents. So this would be the star rating that you give them for the skill. Best available skills is going to take a look at the agents that are available um that have the correct skill and then it was going to prefer the agents that have a higher skill level of that available skill and then finally there's also disregard skills next agent this does this simply tells the system not to care if you're using a skill on the queued call or not it's simply going to look for the next available agent that has been idle for the longest so you can use any of those for whatever method you need here um, now um, this is for bullseye routing. There is also preferred agent routing, which I'm going to go over briefly here. This is actually more architect than it is Q methodology. Um, however, um, what this will allow you to do is configure preferred agents for specific interaction types in architect, and you can add rings for specific scores for those agents. So it's very similar to bullseye routing and skill-based routing. It's just another way to do so. And you can actually combine this with standard or bullseye routing as well. So you can do a preferred list of agents followed by bullseye routing if you so desire. If you want more information on preferred agent routing, that would be covered in a later course that would that would revolve around architect. If you have any questions about it, that would be a good thing to contact our support team about. Next, let's go to members. And this is going to let me show you the bullseye routing as well. So I'm actually going to, before we get in there, I'm gonna save this real quick and then go back to it, which another thing to note about the queues and really any tab within Architect, um, or I'm sorry, within Genesis Cloud, is if you go and save your settings, it is gonna pop you back out to the main page. Let's do that so we just have two available there. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. Just make sure that you have the settings in that you want to put into the queue. So now that that's set up here, let's go ahead and go to members here. And you'll see I have, a blank slate here. I don't have any members in my page at the moment. Now to select new members, I can search by a, by a specific name. So if I look for Tom here, so I've got a few WFM users that I use for another training that I do. If I wanted to add these users to the queue, I could simply choose them. And you'll see it gets added into that little box here. 
And then when I hit this little plus, now all of those users are added. If I wanted to look a little bit harder at the users that I can add, I can click this advanced tab. This advanced tab will allow me to search by different different methods. So for example, maybe they're all in an official group within Genesis Cloud. I could look for that group. I could look for that specific role. If I have my users set up so that I um, have their manager information on their profiles and I know who they report to, I can do that. I can also look by location, skill, or language. Um, and you can use this pane to add users as well. So this will allow you to do um, very much the same thing that the search by name does. You can find multiple people, check their boxes, and add multiple people to the group this way as well. Um, down below, you'll see all the users that I have created in, in the uh, queue here. And there's a bullseye ring number as well for each one of these users, which you can see I can actually manipulate between one and six. So you can have up to six total bullseye rings within the system. Um, now, the um, this is going to dictate when they get ranked. So for example, if WFM one and two were bullseye ring one, they would be in that first group. And if three and four are set as bullseye ring two, they would start getting rang as part of the second bullseye marker. So to go back to the routing here, in our example here, WFM users one and two would ring for five seconds, and then all four of them would be able to get rang after it moves to bullseye ring two. So that's that's how Bullseye works. It's very, very simplistic, but allows you to do things like set up tiers for your queues so that you can have overflow available. The next tab here is wrap-up codes. And wrap-up codes are simply the codes that your agents can choose at the end of a call that can be used in reporting to see what kind of calls are coming in. So for example here, if I just type in, we'll just grab a couple of them here, not support request not interested and not so happy customer. And we'll go ahead and hit the add button here. This is all there is to it for wrap-up codes. So wrap-up codes are going to vary based on um, the customer and what, what your needs are. So everybody's wrap-up codes will be a little bit different. Um, these, these are codes that you can create yourself and then you simply make them available in the queue by adding them in the wrap-up co codes tab here. The end result is if I get a call from this queue and uh, um, and I get connected to it, I can choose one of these wrap up codes um, on the end of the upon the end of the call to notate what kind of call it was, and then reporting can be used to pull this call information. So um, this this is purely for reporting and to make sure you know what kind of calls are coming into your contact center. And finally we have our different interaction types. So we're gonna go through these as well. Voice has by far the most, which makes sense because there's more that can happen with voice. Um, so let's talk about the service level and the service level target. These are reporting metrics and are meant to be used in conjunction with performance dance dashboards to see where your cues lie and if you're meeting your targets. So the default is going to be a service level of 80 with a, or I'm sorry, a service level of 80% with a service level of target of 20 seconds. What this means is the system is looking to see that 80% of the voice interactions offered to this queue are answered within 20 seconds. So that gives you an average service level that you can be looking at for your queue. And the performance dashboard will give you feedback on this level and depending on what you configure, will show you whether or not you're meeting your targets. So this is something that can be configurable to, uh, depending on the customer and queue need. 80% um, out of 20 is a pretty common um, setup that we do see. Underneath here, we have a calling party name and a calling party number. And these are on the queue because in a queue-based interaction setup within Genesis Cloud, your agents can actually make calls on behalf of their queue to return calls to customers. Um, when you when this is done, um, the calling party name, if you're using, for example, Genesis Cloud Voice, um, as well as the calling party number that you specify here is what is going to be outpost when you send those calls outbound. Now the name does have to be honored by the by the carriers going end to end, so that can that can change um, depending on whether or not the database of the um, last mile carrier to the uh, person you're calling does have the name that you are sending. 
However, the calling party number is consistent and will be whatever you need. Um, so the a good example for this here would be a, a um, number that would actually directly connect the um, person you called back to the queue so they know that that is you. Um, so that is what these two fields are for. You also have an alerting timeout. This is how long your agents will get notified that they have an incoming call before it moves to the next agent, therefore putting that agent into not responding. The default for this is eight seconds. Underneath here are some um, queue flow and default scripts that you can look for for these queues. The default script is going to be a script that your agents can look at and use for play-by-play -play for their calls. Depending on your organization, you may or may not use these scripts. If you do have a script that you want to use and you want it to be the default for the queue, no matter when they get a call, you can um, put that script name into the default script and it will get pulled by default unless there's an architect flow that overrides it. The same applies for the in queue flow. By default, the NQ flow is going to use the default NQ flow within Architect. If you have a specific NQ flow that has messaging that applies to this queue, you can specify it here. Um, generally, you will see that these NQ flows are actually called within Architect, so this is already handled for you. But if you have a specific flow that you'd like to use for this queue anytime it's reached, you can put it into the box here as well. Um, Whisper audio is simply going to let you let you know when there's an incoming call. Um, and if you want to use it, there's a whisper prompt box that you can use here. This will play in this will play audio for an agent as a call comes in. You can set it up so that either whisper audio plays for all agents. So you can set up a prompt for anybody that's getting a call. Or if an agent's configured for auto answer, meaning they don't get a choice whether or not they pick up the call, it just beeps into their headset, you can play whisper audio for only those agents as well. There's also the option for voice transcription. Um, if you have voice transcription on for your voicemails, um, which is an organization-wide setting, you can turn this on as well so that you will have voice transcription. Chat is very, very simple. Um, chat is going, is going to refer to web chat. So if you're using any sort of website-based chat with Genesis Cloud, and you're using this queue to handle those, those chat messages. This is going to give you more service level information, which you can see again, 80% of chat interactions within 20 seconds is the default here. We do have a different alerting timeout, which is set to 30 seconds for chat to give people a little bit more time to handle a chat interaction and get started there before it would move to the next agent. And then again, just like with voice, you have a default script option. The default script option would just allow your agent to see a visual script um, with options for them for those interactions. And the same is essentially true for messaging, um, which this is, this is going to be more webhook messaging, such as things uh, such as through SMS. Um, and you can see here the service level and the alerting timeout are exactly the same as chat. You still have the default script. However, there is also an outbound SMS number dropdown that you can use. This is going to correspond to an SMS number that you would purchase through Genesis Cloud. And that number will be used to outpulse any messages that you send in this format. Email, again, very much the same. The big difference with email is going to be that service level target, which you can see is actually defaulting to 86,400 seconds um, with a much higher alerting timeout of 300 seconds. This is because email, unlike the other messaging types, is generally not a real-time experience. So this is designed to give your agents a little bit more time if you are using email in your queues. Um, you can obviously adjust these to whatever that whatever you would like to use. You can specify an outbound email address to send to send these um, these emails from, um, as well as a default script for that as well. Um, so if you have a specific script for email, you could use it there. If you have a specific outbound address that you would like to use for answering email interactions, you can do that as well. And then finally you have a callback tab as well. Um, callback is just simply an interaction in which a um, the caller has selected that they would like a callback. This does have to be offered within Architect in order for that to be something that can be done. And just, just like any of the other interaction types, it's, it's governed by its own service level and its own alerting timeout. Um, so this allows you to track that and make sure that your callbacks are working properly.
And so with that, we got about four minutes left. That does cover the options within the queues function within Genesis Cloud. It does look like there is a couple of questions here. So let's go ahead and handle these in real time here. Um, first one, is there a maximum time in seconds to define for after call work? There absolutely is, but I can't remember what it is. So let's find out. One second here. It looks like it might be 99 seconds because I can't go any further. And it looks like it let me it looks like it let me define that. So let me go back here. Let's see if it'll let me do any more here. There we go. That's why. Apparently, you can go up to 900 seconds. So you do, you do have quite a bit of time you can you can place here. The other option you do have though is you can set it to discretionary to give your agents as much time as they require. Do the evaluation methods only apply once it hits the final ring or do they apply to all the rings? They do apply to all the rings. So for example here um, in the routing tab, if we're looking at ring one, which we'll just say 45 seconds just to make it a little easier to follow, it does follow the evaluation method. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to find the users that are um, that are available um, that have either the appropriate skill or if we're doing disregard skill, um, it would just find the longest idle user. If we're set to best available skills though, it's gonna find those users. And then of those available users, it will select the user that best fits the skill. So it does get used at all times. Any other questions? All right, don't see anything else coming through. Give it just a moment here. Okay, so it looks like that is all the questions that we have at this point in time. If more questions come up after the webinar, as usually happens, that's not a problem. You can always get in touch with us after the fact and we can make sure we get those answers to you. So you can always give us a call at 844-446-3569 or send us an email at contactedinflowcommunications.com. Just give us a general description of your question and we'll make sure that we get the answer for you. Not a problem. And so with that, that concludes our webinar for today. Um, my name is Tom with Inflow. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. We do hope to see you in the future. And as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.